Hey, what's going on everybody? I just got done reading The Book of Five Rings once again. I didn't say this is my first time. Once again. And I decided to put y'all up on some game. You might be thinking, how did I learn about The Book of Five Rings? My cousin, he was in the army um, in Leavenworth Prison. I mean, you got a lot of time in prison. Y'all sharing information. Some people read books in prison. He was one of those I was reading books. So when I called him, we trained information. He put me on game said, Cop that book of five rings and you it's gonna put you in the right direction. He ain't tell me nothing more than that. I said, yeah, I'm gonna take him up on that advice. I read that this book and I started giving it out to people. I didn't bought the audio book. I I keep this joint in rotation. I personally prefer this book over the art of war. Some people prefer the art of war. I like this because it gets down to the soldier level. You're thinking like a general, but you're thinking like a soldier. You need to be thinking like all the above. You know what I mean? The art of war, they really do get, do a bang up job when it comes to knowing your environment. I give them that, but it's more than, you know what I mean? Just knowing your environment, really know thyself, know thy opponent on a very high level. So when you first start this novel, you start reading about the history of Japan, the turmoil that's going on that pretty much uh, was the nucleus that brought out these samurai warriors, you know what I mean? And how basically the laws uh, basically created the format for these warriors. The law said, all samurais must carry two swords, but it, so it became the way. The law pretty much uh, dictated how these warriors conduct themselves off the break. So now that we see the environment shape these samurais to do what they do, we go into Musachi or Miyamoto Musachi. And they basically explain how he came about, how his parents died at a young age. By the age of 13, he committed his first homicide. Um, by the age of 16, he caught another body. And he also went on his own pilgrimage. So from the age of 16 to the age of 50, he basically been on a pilgrimage of warfare, learning his craft. By the age of 30, he caught 60 bodies. Then he said, yo, I need to understand why is Kendo martial art superior to everything else? And he went on the research pilgrimage. He became a general in uh, multiple people's armies. He survived multiple campaigns. Um, at the end of his life, you know what I mean? What happened? You come to find out this dude was an artist. He was a writer. Um, he practiced multiple arts. Uh, he was a master of all, you know what I mean? He's basically from the one, he mastered all. That's basically what's coming about. And he was hanging out with shoguns, the warlords, emperors, and stuff like that. So you know he's learning on a higher level than most people, an educated level. Um, by the time the end of his life, the last two years, he decided to go up to a cave. Um, and he wrote the Book of Five Rings. You heard me? Last two years of life, all he did was write the Book of Five Rings. This short book took two years. So you know that's highly focused. Took two years to write 91 pages. Big words in there too. Pictures and all. You know what I'm saying? But it's very powerful. Don't get it confused because it's only 90 pages that it's not powerful. It's very, very, very powerful. So once you get past that, it goes in the intro and the intro basically reiterates what basically they said about Musachi, you know what I mean? And he basically told the reason why he wrote the Book of Five Rings so he can basically teach the pupils that's up and coming. So now you get past the intro, now you go into the ground chapter. The ground chapter, you're getting into the understanding what is the way and the way is basically uh, the way of the warrior, which is the way of the warrior is strategy. What is strategy? 
is the Warriors Forum. So you're starting to learn these concepts. You know what I mean? And another thing about the Warriors, like we said, the government kind of dictated, you know what I mean, how Samurai's carried himself. Two sword style. So he talks about the two sword style is the way. Point blank period. But then he goes into say that the way can be um, also understood by studying other crafts to make you better at your way. Now, I mean, by studying the farmers, you start understanding seasons better and how to be prepared for the seasons. Like if I'm a warrior and preparing for the seasons, I'm gonna have more water in the winter, I mean the summertime. And then in the winter time, I'm gonna make sure I dress a little bit more in layers and be prepared for that cold season. I might have me a uh, harvest of food waiting because we're in a, no, I mean a non-growth season, so I need to have food on standby for these rough days, these cold days. Now, I mean, he didn't live by traditional living. Like this dude was living no man style, that's free flowing his life. They ain't talking about him owning no house. So he must have been on the forge, either pilgrimage for food, or he was a farmer, farming his food as he goes, and training while he's doing it. Or maybe he did have a house because he learned the ways of the carpenter. Maybe he created a house along his way and just didn't care and just kept the moving. Now I mean, because he created weapons as he was going too. So if that's the way of the carpenter too, now I mean that you know how to form stuff, you're measuring stuff. So you're learning um, these different crafts and you're applying in your life along the way. Now I mean, so the true way is you're kind of open minded about different ways. But you know how to carry yourself on a certain foundation. Once that foundation is a tool sword style, because you're a warrior. Um, beyond that, you start going into the water chapter. So now in the water chapter, you're thinking more about staying even throughout everything in life. Say if I robbed a bank and I was walking out the bank as a robber. I would stay even as hell because the thing about it is that I would not stand out in a crowd because I'm just walking like nothing happened, whatever, you know what I mean? Now, if everybody's sprinting, I should sprint like everybody else, but if everybody else walking, I should walk like everybody else because I'm even, I'm not standing out. It'll make me get away with stuff a lot smoother. It's the same thing, say, if I'm going to war with you, and I see you got an injury. If I get to a side looking at that injury, you're going to know to defend down the injury. If I'm even everywhere I go and I just, whoop, down at the bottom, you expect to come because I ain't show no interest in that joint. I ain't show no heightened sensitivity to what's going on down there at that injury leg. I was going even a whole way. So, like, being even spirit is very powerful. What's also very powerful, say... I was a sailor. Since I'm a sailor, I know how to stand as a sailor. I know how to stand at attention, parade rest, uh, at ease. You know what I'm saying? Because depending on how I want to be presented at that time, I could present that front. You know what I'm saying? And you need to be the same way too. Because think of you as a general. How would a general stand if I'm about to present a speech to all my warriors? How would I stand? How would I approach that stadium? You know what I'm saying? Like, how my voice sound? You have to think about all this when you start thinking about leadership. You know what I'm saying? You have to think about that. Like, how I approach officers in the military was different than how I approach enlisted people in the military. Everybody gets their uh, different attention. You know what I mean? Different strategy, you know what I mean? So you gotta think the same way, you know what I mean? On that level. So you know you know how to carry yourself, you know how not to do, so it makes it a lot easier for you to survive in the battlefield or in life. Um say I didn't want to have a, a fearful attitude in life. How my legs look? 
my legs won't be shaking. I would be standing strong. How my shoulders be? My shoulders be upright. I mean, upright. You know what I mean? How my head be? My neckline be straight up, and I'll be fo focused straight forward. Because now I mean that is the attitude of the superior man. You know what I mean? Now you can think about what's the ways of a s inferior man, and say if that man seen that man on the battlefield, you know, oh man, he's an easy look. We taking him out. But you should also be conscious. That usually those scary men do some very irrational moves, so you better be expecting that too. He gonna go at you with the who knows, or you don't know, don't know. But that warrior knows, cause he you didn't seen that dude too many times. That scary guy, how he's gonna react? So he'll take him out very probably easily. So now that you basically understand the water chapter which the water chapter is basically knowing how to present yourself you you know how to stand you know how your eyes should be you know what i mean your eyes should be at a broad stance so you can see more of the battlefield at the same time like i'm looking broadly but i'm looking at this camera it's like a skill that you learn in this book you gotta learn that john too and then once you get past that you start thinking about the different ways I should hold the sword. I got past the body. Let's make the, the sword be one with the body. So we should just wield it as easy as possible to make it um, one with the body. Now, because they say that once you use a tool long enough, it becomes an extension of the body. So now I mean, they thought about it on that level. So they teach you how to hold the sword, how you hold the sword. So also how you can hold a gun too. Now, I mean, I, I was trained on how to use the gun, so I could see the, you know what I mean, the comparisons and the uh, similarities. Um, what you also gonna learn, you gonna learn about the different attitudes. With the attitudes is where your sore place. You know what I mean, um, when you, you know what I mean, going into compact, is your sore at a upper state? Is it middle? Is it lower? Is it left? Is it right? What? You know what I mean? These are different attitudes. This is the basics. The master and the apprentice know this and they practice this well. The basics. You know what I mean? Um, then you start thinking about applying maneuvers. You know what I mean? And you start thinking about, you know what I mean, counter attacking or being a pro attacker person. If somebody throw this, what am I going to do? How am I going to parry? You start thinking about all this because now you're in the mindset of a warrior. You know what I mean? You're thinking about the next step. You're thinking five steps ahead. If I parry to the left, boom, which sword should I use to counterattack to make sure I put this guy down? Or at least strike him. That's going to lead to another attack that's going to chop him down. So you're thinking like a soldier. This is a very, very, very good book once again. Um, so now that you basically, you know how to hold your body, you know how to wield the sword, you know when to wield the sword, it's time for you to basically go to the next chapter, which the next chapter is the win chapter. So in the win chapter, now you're thinking like, I, I need to know the big things and the little things. Because the little details will get you hurt. The big things, what they show you, they got coming for you. Know what I mean? You peeping that, know what I mean, that they got a um, cannon at a certain distance that could be, know what I mean, hindrance to your position. Now that you've seen that little detail, you can maneuver your man further back to the left, to the right, whatever, to counterattack that, you know what I mean? But it's a big picture going, it's a big warfare. You just seen that low cannon, that's the small detail. So when you think like a warrior, you gotta, or a general, you gotta, you gotta be seeing the small details and the big details all at once. Know what I mean? And also you gotta understand that every um, style of martial arts is not for you. Know what I mean? Like you, you get into the wind chapter, you learn that it's a lot of martial arts styles that you shouldn't be a part of. You shouldn't be practicing with a super long sword. That's not the way. You shouldn't be practicing with 
small source, that's not the way. Know what I'm saying? And like by knowing the real way and knowing the not right way, then the weakness to the not right way, somebody approach you with the not right way, you can knock them off easy because you already know where the weakness is in that weapon. So by you knowing the improper, you know the proper. Which this basically, that one chapter of you knowing what not to do and what to do leads to the void chapter. Which the void chapter is basically you being void of blind spots. It's not you being void of, I don't care about society, I don't care about this and woo woo. No, you're overly informed. You're a void of being attacked. You are the master. The master only becomes the master is when you can basically determine the attack that they're going to be sending your way and the counterattack that's basically you're going to send their way. You already know how this game goes. You playing chess with these dudes before they even hit the board. You know how this is going to go. You think like a warrior. And you are void of not knowing. Like, if I'm on the battlefield, I should be knowledgeable of how far that cannon is going to shoot. To, to know if I am in range of being hit by a cannonball. Now, I mean, that's being void. I know that I'm not in range because I know that can only shoot 500 feet and I'm at 600, which that's also the carpenter's way. You know the measurements. Now, I mean, accurate measurements, what's going to happen? Like, you already see stuff that a novice ain't going to see. So, it's good to know your craft to the science because, for one, your body will become one with your weapon. You won't worry about how you're wielding the weapon. Only thing you're going to be worried about is how to take somebody down. Now, I mean, all the focus is on the one. I want to cut this guy down, and that's it. I don't want to. I don't want to care how I hold my feet because I already mastered it. How to hold my hands? I don't want to do that because I'm already mastered. I'm aware of my surroundings because my eyes are already um, um, evolved enough that it's just always on an outward, force-looking type of view. But I'm still focused right here, even though I'm looking out. I'm looking straight at you at the same time. It's like you mastered. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically you being void. By you knowing, you are void of the bullshit. And that's a level you want to get to. Um, I told you it's a short book. The review is over. It's only five chapters. We got the ground. We got the water. We got the fire. We got the wind. We got the void. It's that simple. So I would strongly suggest you go out there. You buy your copy of the uh, Book of Five Rings. And apply it to your life. If you are a carpenter, you know what I mean? Practice relentlessly. relentlessly. Make sure you got your tools up to par. Um, make sure you're mastered at measuring stuff. Um, make sure you're mastered at which uh, pieces of wood to use for certain things. Like, is it for, are we building a door? Are we building the wood joints? Are we building uh, uh, some lids to a pot? Like, you know what I mean? Once you become a master, you can look at wood and be like, no, that's not going to fly for that uh, wall right there. But we could put that as a uh, fence outside. That's the master. You know what I mean? You know what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with, say, a soldier. Soldier sees the marshland. He's like, no, we ain't walking there. We'll walk around and we're going to force their army to go into the marsh. Because we back them into the marsh, they're going to have a rough day. It's going to be a hell of a fight they're going to have with their hand. That's the mastery. So this is your boy, Michael Higgins. Go out there. Go cop you a copy of the Book of Five Rings. I missed the Book of Five Rings in the uh, War Not Gun Cut book that I wrote. So, you know what I mean? It's a great read. Like, I'm giving people knowledge even when I ain't doing a book review. I'm giving you these layups, man. Don't that John, man. This your boy Michael Higgins. Subscribe to this YouTube page. Um, go to laughthinkgeek.com. Follow me on that joint. I mean, I'm dropping some more jewels. Know what I mean, because the thing about it, I might have did a vlog, but I also have a blog that kind of go more deep. So if you're a person that's into more studying it, 
Go to the uh to my blog and I'll uh, have that joint ready for you too. You know what I mean? This your boy Michael Higgins. I appreciate y'all checking me out. Now I mean if you feeling me, press like. If you feeling even more, do a comment. If you feeling even more, throw me a donation. <laughs>